Hold on. Let me set my stuff down. You're fine. Oh, my name is Jeremy Winfield Feldbush. My birth date is October 18th, 1979. I served with uh, 3rd Ranger Battalion, the 75th Ranger Regiment uh, from 2001 to 2003. Um, I was injured at the Haditha Hydroelectric Dam. It was us. I was an 11 Charlie. It was uh, an, an infantry mortarman. It was us and Delta Force uh, seizing the Haditha Hydroelectric Dam. Um, and I was hit by shrapnel. So I'll start off with that. Um, I guess you can piece this together. Where would you like me to go? other other than that i mean I, I guess we can start why did you start it or why did you join the military right we can start there and we elaborate from there what was one of your major reasons that just pushed you to be like I, i'm going into service in high school i mm -hmm. um well you always <laughs> when you when you serve you always strive to be the best i think that's everybody who's in agreed um uh that's just that's just no matter where you, no matter where you come from because you come from everywhere right and everybody who you're there with is striving to be striving to be the best and working together at it and that's that's why we do what we do um when i was when i was in high school i wanted to go to a military academy well at the time i wanted to go to a military academy so i um put into congressman murtha mm. to go to the air force academy yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I put in to go to the Air Force Academy. Well, I got the nomination to go to West Point. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I like it. Well, <laughs> I said, all right, I got the nomination. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the Air Force Academy. Yeah. But maybe somebody's telling me something. So I got the nomination for the Army to go to West Point. Uh, um, uh, when I put in with West Point, um, mm -hmm. you know, with all the applicants, they said, okay, listen, we're not going to accept you this year, but if you go to an academy for a year, we'll accept you the following year. Right. Well, I, you know, I could have done that. It, it's not what I wanted to do. It's, mm -hmm. you know, struggling with inside and you're like, you want to be, you know, you, the best you can be. And so instead of doing that, I looked at other colleges. I was looking at other colleges. Mm -hmm. I went to the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, and graduated from awesome. there with a degree in biology. And even while I was there, I wanted to do something else. I, I liked I liked what I was doing with biology. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I liked what I was doing, but I wanted to do something else. And something said, maybe maybe somebody was telling you something with the army before. <laughs> right. Yes. And it took you. A whole different route. Well, from where you initially wanted to <laughs> head into. <laughs> well, I, uh, a friend of mine who I knew mm -hmm. since I was, yeah, we'll say five, um, I said, Hey, Tom, Tom Marlett is his name. I said, Hey, Tom, he was a uh, chief warrant officer three in intelligence in the army. I said, hey, Tom, I want to join the Army. He said, oh, you do, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, basically, I finished. I did four years, but I had to go a couple classes in the summer. Right. Um, which was fine. I finished finished that. I went and I took took the ASVAB and everything and got my scores. And uh, and they said, when I was sitting down, sitting down with the MEPS officer, yes. he said, what do you want to do? Uh, I said, well, I want to join the infantry. He said, okay, that's easy. He said, anything else you want to do? He said, I said, I want to be airborne. He said, hmm, <laughs> that might be a little bit hard. Yeah. So I sat back in my chair. I took a breath, but before I was able to say anything, mm -hmm. Tom was in there and he said, he wants to be a ranger. And he goes, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> Typing starts occurring. He goes, he goes, we got airborne school. We got. <laughs> That's, there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> he goes, he goes You're, and I said, oh. So, uh, yeah, I said I wanted, I wanted to be in the Ranger Regiment, and, I, and that's where it started. And I, 
did I know what I was stepping into? Right. No. You would have never touched it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Infantry is, it's a love and hate relationship, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, me, I was in the Marine Corps. I was a uh, yeah. 031 machine gunner. And I could tell you, I mean, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, but <sighs> being out in the field, right? Cold weather all the time. Right, digging oh. foxholes. Like it's, I'm not about it, but I, I guess you know, I enjoyed it for the time being. But I, I, I agree with you. You know, like uh, it, it's a love and hate relationship. You do it, you know, and the reasons behind it always pairs with the outcome of like why we do it. You know, so, I'll tell you, I'll tell my worst time, <laughs> my worst time in the military. Now, I've had some. I'll, I'll get, I'll get into the life changing events in a little while. But my worst time in the military, <laughs> I had great times in the military, but my worst time in the military, we're out in the field. Imagine that. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're out in the field. Yeah. It's nighttime. Oh, dark 30. And it's time to pack up and go. And, and every, well, we're all good. Thank the Lord. It's <laughs> been it, forever. We, yes. we, days. We, we, we can get out of here. It's oh, dark. Let's go. Well, all right. I'm not riding in a Humvee. I'm riding in the Land Rover. There you go. There's no roof on the Land Rover. <laughs> There's a rack for hanging guns. You can put everything in the back. There's two seats in the front mm -hmm. with a windshield. There's seats back in the back that are down in like a gully, down in a hole where yeah. you can sit too. Right. And there are seats right behind. I don't know if there was anybody behind the driver or if it was just me over behind the passenger. And it was cold. <laughs> See? Oh man, was I'm already we're already freezing, and we got to go back. I'm thinking, all right. Th this is so why we're on our yeah. No, this is why. Like, I love tropical weather, the warm weather. That's like I'd rather sweat than be cold any any day. That's just me though. I this that's the reason why I hated the cold. I was in it too much, too many times, too many Sergeant, days. Sergeant J, he's an E six. I was an E four at the time. I, I got I retired. I got out as an E five. Awesome. But, um, he uh he uh <laughs> we're going down the road and it is freezing and I hear him laughing up there. He goes, <laughs> How you doing back there, Feldbush? I said, F you, Sergeant. I said F you he starts laughing i said sergeant <laughs> he just starts laughing <laughs> we grunts have no filter <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> yeah i mean i've i've heard that expression many times <laughs> oh it was That's funny awesome. but not that it was the worst oh i was so cold <laughs> oh, and there was nothing i could do it was yeah. just cutting through me <laughs> so when was um when did you deploy when was that uh, uh when was that deployed, special day we deployed in january of 03 Oh, three. That was your first deployment. January of 03 to uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi. Okay. Yeah, to Saudi. You guys do anything, any uh, any work out there? Like um, any action? Do you guys take any actions out there? In Saudi Arabia? Yeah. No. Or just, just regular, regular just, work up? We just basically, you know, we, <laughs> unless we're tasked to do something mm -hmm. because, it, because we're always doing something. Right. You know, when when we're doing something, unless we're tasked to do something, what do you, what do you think we were doing? Stand by to stand by. Who's got cards? Yeah, <laughs> stand by to stand by. <laughs> but but when they said, well, there there were a couple things. Um, I don't know. I don't know what all has been said. Mm -hmm. But um, we were tasked to take buy up. Okay. All three Ranger battalions. Uh, I think 82nd Airborne, um, uh, I think Delta, and uh, we were tasked to take Baghdad International, both in uh, civilian and military side. I was coming in on the military side. Okay. Yeah. And um, wow. Yeah, we we kept getting we were we were we were we were on the countdown for that, and it kept getting bumped and bumped and bumped yeah. and bumped by a few days. But yeah, that we we were we were tasked to do that. But it kept getting bumped, and 
So, yeah. but we, we, hey, if that's what we're going to do, we're going to take, right. we're going to take Baghdad International, but they kept getting bumped and they said, no, we're not going to do that. So, okay. okay. Um, our, uh, it's not all everything that we did. I mean, it was all right. Of, what, so when did, of, go ahead. when was your uh, I guess the first combat deployment um, that you that you um, experienced? Uh, I can't remember the date of the mm -hmm. first. I'm sorry, I can't remember oh, the date fine. of the first combat deployment. But I mean, we were over there from January on into February, and when everything mm -hmm. kicked off. Yeah. Um, but uh, and as the infantry was moving across mm -hmm. Iraq, we're still we're still they're like. You guys just said, we don't need you. They're like, we don't need you yet. We're like, okay. Yeah. That's what we, we know. We, we know when you want us, you'll call us. <laughs> yeah. We, we know, we know what we do. When you want us, you'll call us. Do you uh, know when we do the, well, you know, you know when Spec Ops does the majority of their work. Right. Yeah. When it's dark. Dark. Yeah. <laughs> Zero dark 30. <laughs> well, we got tasked for, for another mission. It was mm -hmm. taking, it taking out another airfield. Um, uh, with a with a company and one stick of, with my stick of mortars. Yeah, and uh, that one that one was definitely a go because we needed we needed a position for another seizure. Yeah, uh, out in the middle of another city and a structure that was you know a key point for something mm -hmm. uh, hydroelectric dam. Gotcha. And you can understand that. Yes. Uh, not only the city, but the hydroelectric dam. But um, we went into, uh, we came into an airfield. I was sitting to the right of me was my friend, Matt Shea, who's from the Northeast. He actually lives 165 miles away from me and I need to visit with him. Um, uh, he works for the, him and another guy I served with work for a Naval in uh, Mechanicsburg, or, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, okay. Yeah. But, um, and to the left of me was our battalion surgeon. And right across from me, with a pair of headset on, mm -hmm. was the uh, Third Ranger Battalion Commander, Stephen Bannock. Wow. Uh, just on comms, listening to everything and talking if he needed to with not only the pilots, but everybody in the other planes and comms on the ground. Um, and he was sitting there and I would just, the entire, we were in the air for a while, but the entire time we were in flight, I would just look at him. And there was one point in the flight He just looked over at me, smiled, just looked over at me. I gave me a wink and smiled. And the plane was going like this. Mm -hmm. It went like that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we started down cause we were flying, we were flying high. Obviously we were flying high. Right. And, uh, we just obviously hit the nosedive and, um, when we went out, we were probably in the air for a couple of seconds mm -hmm. and on the ground for, because we didn't want anything incoming. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. And there were, obviously, you know, with airborne assaults, there are casualties. A friend of mine who was a sniper, he weighed in it with everything he was carrying, weighed in at 460 pounds. He broke I... both his legs. Oh my God. Yep. Broke his left ankle and spiral fractured his uh, right tibia. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's but, painful. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they would weigh me bigger yeah. guys. They would weigh uh, mm -hmm. with what they were carrying, but yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of pounds. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff yeah, to he carry. Hit, he hit the ground and he said, ow. And he said, let me try and stand up. And then he went back to the ground. And oh, the red cam. Yeah. He said, he said, they said they handed something to me and said, start licking this. And then he said, they said, what, what's that? He said, when they took it away from me, he was like, give that back. It was a morphine oh. lollipop. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I've heard about that. <laughs> oh man. So, but now was he okay? Um, yeah, he, he, uh, got out. he lives in, he lives in, well, not that he doesn't want me to talk about it, but he lives right. in Amarillo, Texas and he delivers nukes now for the government. Okay. Yeah. He delivers nukes. Well, I don't know if he still does, but that's mm. what he was doing. Yeah. Did you want when, me to... he, when he got out, he went back to college. Gotcha. Delivering nukes now, but that's just some of the stuff. That okay. One one of the things, but um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> we uh, after we seized that airfield, mm -hmm. um, you know, did everything we needed to do, uh, cleared everything up that was in there, had planes come in and land. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, just took over the airfield. Yes. They had planes come in and land, deliver what we needed to do. Uh, um, we had another, you know, other things that happened in country. People met up with us. Right. And uh, they said, hey, we need guy. we need you, 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 you know, they, right. were, they said, we need you. I said, okay. And I said, what, what are we doing? Operation Links. And I said, sounds good to me. Where are we headed to? And we were going to the Haditha Hydroelectric Dam. Gotcha. And so we drove, we drove two nights, drove, uh, left, left at the uh, start. It was still daylight, but we left at daybreak, um, to drive, drive the nighttime. Mm -hmm. Uh, we hit, uh, at uh, as sun break was coming up, we hit our point where we were staying, where there were a couple hills off of each side where we could pull our vehicles into the circle yes. and uh, camp up, catch them a nap, you know, you know, just take recover. care of everything we yeah. get, rest and recover, mm -hmm. uh, meet up with Delta Force. Um, they, uh, um, they, uh, they, uh, not right there, but they met up with us, obviously connected with what we were going to do right um met up with us later in in their vehicles hopped in our vehicles uh, or did they meet up well they hopped i had there were actually two guys in the back of my humvee okay. and uh um yeah i was like i said you know i know what i do but <laughs> these guys are a little bit different <laughs> oh, i bet <laughs> well uh, my command sergeant major mm -hmm. When he came into the when he came into the army, um, he uh, well it was second command sergeant major. When he came into the army, he had what his MOS was, and he started off in the Rangers. And he said, huh, "I want to go into Delta Force," and he spent a career in the Delta Force and was a command sergeant major. And they said, "We need the sergeant major and third ranger battalion." He was the coolest, most laid back. He he would walk he walked the down with a sniper rifle, walk Oof. the. Huh? I said, oof, with walked a sniper rifle. Every day with a, with a 7.62 sniper rifle. Every day walked <laughs> and he stopped with us, sat and ate with us. And he, That's he, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Command Sergeant Major Birch. He was, he was, a, he was, a, he, yeah, he's a, he's a cool guy. He's a badass. But, uh, I like um, it. Uh, when we were. When we were driving, when we were coming on to the dam, we got onto the highway got onto the road and uh there were a few vehicles in front of it obviously we're in a convoy and there are a few right. vehicles in front of us and they drove they kept driving and sergeant sergeant jay <laughs> he's up front in the passenger seat and uh i hear him up front saying stop 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 back up back up and i'm thinking uh oh what's going on he says feldbush get up come here and i'm thinking all right, what do we got to do? He says, he says, we got a foxhole up here. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get up there and there were, there were two, there were two guys in the foxhole and we, that nothing happened. We cleared them out of the foxhole, got the weapons. Yeah. And, uh, there were, let's, let's put it, let's put it to you this way. We got out of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of other people got out of their vehicles and they were surrounded by operators. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, where are they? Where are With they, uh, nods on. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. Did they, did they make it out alive? Or? Yes, they did. Oh, man. Yes, they did. I saw them in the back of the truck, in the back of the truck, handcuffed, uh, uh. moving across the dam. Those, um... Uh, you know, despite what we did, mm -hmm. I, I, I know what war entails right. and I'm not proud of war, but I know, I know, I know what the consequences that yeah. come with it. Yeah. Yes. I, I know what we need. I know what we need to do. Yes. And I'm glad those, I'm glad they're still here. I'm glad, I'm glad they came out of that hole and said, and and just surrendered yeah yeah i'm yeah. glad i'm glad i'm glad it didn't take a five five six for them to stop right yeah now because i i i i was standing there i mm -hmm. didn't say a thing but i was mm -hmm. standing there just looking at them saying please just do exactly what they're saying because right. i don't want to pull this trigger right yeah understandable yeah but it's understandable. it, 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 it yeah. doesn't matter you don't want to do that that's another person you're looking at just right. just please listen just you know mm -hmm. come on 
But anyway, we moved on to the dam and, you know, that's where everything started. Right. So now I guess uh, when it came to your injuries, was that the same deployment or was that a whole different one? Yeah. That was the same deployment. Yeah, that was the same deployment. Um, we uh, we were on the Haditha Hydraulic Dam. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be about two or three days. Yes. So when you've prepared for an operation that's supposed to last two or three days, right? you have provisions for those two or three days plus a little bit extra. You don't have a provisions for a week. Which it turned out to be a week. Yes. Instead of, oh, yeah. Some yeah. things don't go as planned. Yeah. Yeah. So when things are happening and you need other people to come in, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that time period, there were you know obviously we had our we had 120 millimeter mortars i was the first gun so uh we had what do we have three tubes mm -hmm. um and uh uh there's all there's you know when you have when you have guns set up set up in a line there's obviously you can fire all three guns but there's going to be one gun that's going to be firing the majority of the time right and you can guess which gun that was yeah uh it, we weren't just doing that. I mean, there was small arms fire down in front. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know who didn't last from that. But um, uh, and please don't feel obligated to like talk about it if you don't. No, you don't no, want no. To. I don't. I don't mind. It happened. I can't mm -hmm. change it. So it, right. it, 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 to say it bothered me before. Mm -hmm is not a lie because it did but to say it bothers me now to say it bothers me now would also be a lie right but to be able to get through it is a completely different thing that takes time agreed but um uh just a lot of stuff a lot of stuff in one place can happen uh, yes to come to completely change what's going on from small arms to people coming at you with mortar rounds to right. artillery fire yeah we had, uh, I remember when the artillery rounds started fire coming in and it was like, mm. okay, well, it looks like we know what they're starting to do. And that was daytime fire that was coming in. But um, uh, I saw a round come over on to the, to the uh, uh, east side of the dam, mm -hmm. land, drop down, hit the ground and roll down the hill it probably would, take, would have taken out an entire squad had it blown up. I can only imagine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dad. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> when, you, when, uh, you, you, when you see this stuff happen, mm -hmm. you just, you're thinking, oh, you, you, you don't, you, you, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, take everyone out. We, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get into the, the artillery rounds here in a minute, but, um, Our, uh, we had, we had snipers, pairs of snipers at each end with seven, six, twos and fifties. So the spotters and the shooters were both long and short guns. So you see how they were operating. Right. They were, yeah. They're both shoot. So we, everybody's a shooter. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so they were, they were, they were tag teaming it, working both ends. The majority of the shooting was happening on the right side because that's the side the city was on. But. You, you don't you don't work that way you cover all grounds right um uh there was when they started with the mortar fire coming towards us one gun get on target so we got on target with them coming towards us they were dropping rounds they weren't coming close right as they were getting closer so were the rounds so yeah. we were dropping rounds direct fire on top of them and they were blowing up but they weren't they weren't doing what they wanted them to i said let's switch this to proximity burst so we started we they start we started grabbing the rounds and switching them all to proximity burst right and i said all right let's start dropping the rounds and i'm i'm sitting on the gun we dropped the round there was a guy running mm -hmm. with a round to drop to drop in the tube yes yeah do you did you ever see franco harris's immaculate reception i did not oh uh, well he was uh when he was well if you ever get a chance to look up well franco's gone now but uh yeah, being from pittsburgh <laughs> i got you <laughs> but uh um 
it, it really looked like he was running. I was watching it through the tube. I, I was watching through the sight, the round come down. He was running. The round was coming straight down on him. And he looked like he was going to catch it while he was running with the round. Right. And it was obviously above. So it was on proximity burst. So it blew above head. And uh, there they were all gone. Wow. Yeah. But hey, hey, it was either it was either them or us. So yeah, yeah. But uh, um, that's that's got to be tough. Though, yeah, you know? yeah. It's a, it's I, a I, tough situation. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> but it's a great you know, decisions how fast you guys can think and get rounds you know up in the air. Yeah. So yeah. that's awesome. Uh, yeah, when they when they when they were landing and hitting, you're thinking, oh man, these are one twenties, the the mm. blast dispersal, but it wasn't doing anything. And I yeah. said, switch them to proximity, and we just started turning rounds. And right. I, and when they did that, I said, you know, I, it was it, it, it's either them, it's either them or you. Right, exactly. Uh, you know, there's, 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 there's no two ways around it. Nope. There, there, and, you can't and, look at it any mm-hmm. other way. Because it's not just you yourself, right? Like you yeah. got to think about everybody. everyone around it's, you. It's everybody. Exactly. It's you everybody. Know, so it's just like as hard as hard as that decision can be. You know, you have to take that decision and make the correct one and make the right one to keep everyone safe around you. You know, so yeah. I, that's understandable. You know, yeah. it's it's either you or them. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, and we know what, why we signed up, so I feel like that's always a correct decision to keep our guys safe. Yeah, you know? heard. on okay. April the third, um, artillery rounds are. <clears throat> it's not that they're walking them in, but once again, it's another day. They're training their rounds in, and they're walking them up in on the dam. And uh, you know, there was a there was a call for fire. You can guess which gun that was. Yes. And uh, two guys stand up. <laughs> a guy that's about six foot two you're talking to right now. And a guy that's about mm, my friend that lives 165 miles away from me. <laughs> Probably, oh, how tall is she? About 5'8", five, 5'8", eight, five, eight, five, So we've got the, the back of the dam, which has a wall over it that you have to jump over the top of. Right. Well, as I stand up and as... As I, I'll stand up now. And as I stand up where the wall is, yes, you see the difference between for me and for well, well I'll, let me rephrase. Let me drop it down. For the wall is for me, and for him who was over off to my right. Right. Yes. So it was a little bit lower. So he's more protected with with everything. So as soon as the rounds came in and landed ten meters away, mm-hmm. so you got the blunt of it all. I got hit. Yes. Yeah, piece of shrapnel about an inch by an inch and a quarter inch oh, that hit me in my uh, right side of my right eye and went through my right eye and um, right right through my uh, straight up through my um, cranium into my uh, left frontal lobe and got lodged there. Yeah, I hit the ground and life changing. Life changing event just occurred. Yes. Yeah. Now, when it came to it's that's a huge obstacle in life. But I feel like, I mean, from just watching you, you're out here hunting, you know, I feel like you have, it's almost like you've adapted, overcame, and you're living life to the fullest. I mean, every time that I've seen you, I've seen you, you're always laughing. You have such a huge smile on your face, well, which is awesome. It makes me really happy, you know. It's been, <laughs> I was saying to Nick Dorsch, well, Nick and my dad, my dad came mm-hmm. over, I said, what year was the first year we did this? Well, it's been 20 years since I've done this. <laughs> well, I've done hunting in Pennsylvania okay. and other places, but it's been 20 years since I've done this. And you can go out hunting, and I, I love hunting. I love being out there. And <laughs> when you, we were talking about the cold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pennsylvania, when's deer hunting happening? It's there, when cold. it's snowing. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> when everything's frozen. Yeah. Uh, PA was right next to me. I was in, in New Jersey. Yeah, you know? I know. So I, I hate the cold, <laughs> no. so I moved out of there. Ended up in North Carolina. I was on my way to Florida. I never made it there. It is seven, 60 and 70 degrees down here. There yeah, was over six inches of snow melting at in, my house in, when I left. <laughs> <laughs> you see? It was sub-zero. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. I mean... I'm this close to just like just going to somewhere in South America just just to chase, you know, the warmth. Yeah, I'm very close, but I, was, I, I don't mind this. I was saying to Troy, 
uh, the other night. The, the well, Troy's Troy's well, not just Troy. All all the guys and ladies here mm-hmm. are are the people here. But Troy is the, the I guess he's the Troy. Troy's the man when it comes to getting this done here. When he started it off, and I asked what what he I asked um Greg today what he started it off with, and he said twelve Russian. 12 russian uh boars and sows is what he started this off with wow yep Mm -hmm. he said and yeah and now what it's become with the boars sows uh white tail Mm -hmm. the all dad the rams rams the well the guy i would have liked to shoot a coyote but (laughs) yeah yeah coyote damn squirrel that gave me a middle finger today (laughs) (laughs) well (laughs) Well, I'll get back to what Troy said to me. Well, what I said to Troy earlier, we were out there today and a squirrel, my dad was saying, he goes, there's a squirrel out there. He goes, it comes running down. Then it run, it ran back up into a tree. I said, can you see it? He goes, hmm, I'm looking. He goes, oh, there's a dead tree leaning over into a live tree. And I see its head and ears poking out. I said, what's it doing? He goes, it's looking at us. <laughs> well, finally the squirrel comes out, it's down there eating the food. And I said, I hear it. That's he goes, he goes, I said, he goes, I hear it. He goes, now it's standing straight up. He goes, oh, it just gave you the middle finger. I said, that girl's going to die. <laughs> Did you take the shot? No, oh, no. Man. Well, I told, I told Troy, I said, next year, I said, I'm going to come back and get the, I said, I said, I'm going to get all, I said, seven. I said, I said, I'm even throwing a squirrel on. <laughs> I said, I'm going to get the grin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be but awesome. I, I was saying to him the other night, I said, when I'm doing this, not only with all the company that's here, with everybody, right. with every, with all of you guys, it's, I said, I have one of the best times I've ever had. And then I said, wait, wait, hold on. I said, I have the best time I ever had with my kids. I said, but I have the second best time right here when I'm with, with all you guys. I think I yeah, heard you it, saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I have, I have a great time. That, yeah. that is true. Like, um, I have a great time with my family, but this has been and I, I can second that, you know? It, it's been a memorable, and I'm glad I have a lot of it on film. I will never forget this day, right? Like, it's one of the greatest times that I've had. In, in Nick's, Nick Dorsch's daughter, Olivia. Mm-hmm. I, ha- I haven't seen Nick in, in, I've talked to him, but I haven't seen him in years. Nick's daughter, Olivia, I haven't seen in longer. Um, well, I came walking out of, I came walking out of the cabin, and uh um and who was I with was I with my dad or I might have been with my dad and Nick my dad sees Nick's daughter Olivia mm-hmm. who's in the Air Force now yeah she works with the IRF the immediate uh, uh, immediate response force she yes. does all work with the PJ you know she mm-hmm. does work with that she wants to work with special forces I said hey give me a call we'll go over to Columbus and see some crazy guys in the Rangers maybe <laughs> jump out of an airplane yeah she said yeah that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> but um uh oh what was I gonna say oh when my dad saw Olivia it was one of those moments where he was like he don't say anything. He looked at her and he just goes, Shh, puts his finger up to his mouth and just goes, Shh. and he looks and Nick's already smiling. He said, Nick got the biggest smile on his face <laughs> when he's going, Shh. and Olivia's just walking over to me and she's got a big smile on her face. And Nick goes, Hey, Jeremy, put your arms out. Olivia walks into my arms. She goes, Hey, how are you doing? I said, Oh, that's awesome. Cause I hadn't seen her in years. But yes. I said to her, I said, Hey, Olivia, I, well, we talked for a little bit and I said, Hey, Olivia, from one ASVAB to another, she goes, what's that? I said, I'm going to buy you a hog. She goes, what? She goes, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. Oh, that's awesome. That's <laughs> well, great. When she was when she was going out, mm-hmm. I said, what do you, because Nick has a, a, a 30, oh, what's he got, a 35 and a 300 wind mag. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I said, I said, hey, Olivia, what are you taking out? She goes, a 300 wind mag. I said, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, um, I have a 300 Weatherby Magnum. And I told Nick, he goes, oh, this thing's got one hell of a kick on it. I said, take that bull barrel off, uh, take that barrel off of it. I said, we're sending it off to Texas. He, uh, he's basically, he was like, what? I said, we're getting a muzzle brake put on that thing. Yeah. So I had, a, I had a special muzzle brake down in Texas, put on my 300, uh, 
um, Weatherby Magnum. Yes. <coughs> it's the next best thing to a silencer. It's loud as it's loud as heck, and it's like a flamethrower out the front, but it, it takes down the uh, kick on your arm. Yes. And oh, oh it's amazing. It's st it's still a cannon. That right. It takes down the suppressing and the kick on your arm, mm -hmm. and it still has the punch. That's awesome. <laughs> and that's what she dropped her hog with, and I said, "Nice." <laughs> that's awesome. I need to, I need to do something with my rifle because my hey, thing has a kick. If you if you want if you want to get a muzzle brake put on, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send it down to Texas for you. Okay. And we'll, we'll get a muzzle brake put on it for you, and okay. it will completely change your world. Yeah. I'm telling you that that thing, my my, you know the. Um, the nipple where you put the sling. Oh, I, what, what what rifle do you want to put it on? Uh, my uh, the Browning. Um, I have a three hundred rum Browning. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. If you got a three hundred, that'll <laughs> that, be perfect. That for recoil. As soon as you said three hundred, yes, yeah, that'll be perfect that, for oh, Browning three hundred. <laughs> that 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 is a nasty round, but <laughs> that recoil on that gun, I, I'll feel it for a couple of days. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I had to switch out the gun just to uh, just to be able to like like shoot um, just because it, it it kicks my butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kicks my butt. Yeah, but no, that is that is awesome, man. So this hog hunt, it's something that you've done for twenty plus years. Well, no, With I haven't done this in twenty years. Okay. And I, when when I was talking to Nick, Nick sent out an email, mm -hmm. and he said, "Well, it didn't matter that it was going to be the thirtieth Doug Vaughn Memorial Hunt." Yes. Um, for you know, for Doug Vaughn passing away from cancer, right? And everything, and what we've been doing, what Bob Door started back in 1994. Yes. Um, uh, I said, you know what? I've been missing this for too long. Mm -hmm. I got on the phone. I said, Hey, Nick, <laughs> it's time to go on a hog hunt. He said, Yeah, man. I said, Yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Yeah, man. <laughs> no, it's awesome, man. You come out here and like the equipment you bring, it's really cool. Well, I yeah. told. I told, <laughs> I told Bob Dorsch. I said, I said, I think next year. I said, I think I'm going to bring the cannon, the 338 the Lapua. Oh man, <laughs> Oof. take the suppressor off of that thing. Oh man, you have a suppressor on that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, uh -huh. I do. Oh, I'm not going to shoot that thing without a suppressor. <laughs> I wouldn't either. I love that. Gun. It's got a bull yeah. barrel on it. Well, I got. It's got rails running down the top, the sides, and yeah, I, yeah. it's hooked up. Oh yeah. Oh, I can. It, it was actually. Imagine. It was actually a gift. Was um, it? Yeah. A friend, a friend of mine who served in, um, uh, well, you'll never guess where he served. Third Ranger Battalion. He was a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, was, was he the one? Well, yeah, he was the one. They, they asked, they said, what kind of, what kind of gun would he like? And my dad told him what I would like. And they said, well, would he like a 338 Lapua? And my dad said, "Yeah, he would like that." <laughs> well, when I got when I got down to a shoot, it was a silencer. It was a shoot, but with silencers in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, "Hey, Jeremy, we have something here for you." And they handed it to me. And they said, "Here's a 338 Lapua." And I basically said, "Holy shit!" <laughs> and that they said, a... "Here's a can for it too." I oh, said, "Oh man. man, I didn't shoot it that day, but yeah." That thing's a beauty of yeah. that. Yeah. I did. Um, I well, I, I t uh, what I what I did shoot. That, I did shoot mm. some pistols that day with suppressors on it. With, there were some uh, spec ops guys, that, some special forces guys okay. there. Um, uh, you know, just there were all, everybody was there. Yeah. But there was there were some military people there too. You yes. know, just having fun shooting and. Um, yeah, there was some tan right there, so there was some crap blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> there were some cars out there to shoot at, and there were some fifty caliber rifles there. Some bolt action.